I'm going to put it on you. You've just said exactly what Bryony said. You've got to redefine success. It's not about winning. That's not a useful mindset. I bet you were stoked she won. Oh, absolutely. The whole country was stoked. <laughs> I think looking at the videos of uh, the various bars around the country with the moment she won, um, yes, Ash had a huge energy release, but I reckon the whole country did after the last two years. Yeah, what was that roar about, Mindset Coach? Oh, <laughs> I reckon it was just a, an energy release. Uh, she created this incredibly calm, stoic, uh, kind of going within herself that started way before the Australian Open and carried over into the Australian Open. But she's also human, right? So, you know, when you want to celebrate these particular moments, I had, I actually didn't see it on the night. We were all hugging and crying in the coach's box. So... I actually missed it, but obviously saw it pretty quickly on the replay. And as I said, it was just, yeah, an energy release that the whole country needed as well for themselves. So, yeah, you celebrate these opportunities. They don't come along that often. Yeah. Um, uh, she has talked about the influence that you've had and said you're a massive part of her success. And what you talk about is finding your intrinsic motivation, right, as opposed to focusing on the external goal, I want to win the Australian Open, and that, 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 that champions like Ash can be distracted by a desire to win. Just take me through that again. Isn't that, isn't, sorry, but isn't winning the point? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit counterintuitive, isn't it? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's, she's definitely got goals and dreams that she's spoken about publicly to win Wimbledon or, or win the Australian Open. But it's really important to realise that playing tennis is what she does. It's not who she is. And she doesn't determine her self-worth on whether she wins or loses. You know, don't get me wrong, she was the most competitive person I've ever met and will always compete, have fun and play out there. It's just that it, she doesn't define success for her. You know, success for her isn't as much extrinsic about winning and achieving and making money and getting recognition. For her, success is more intrinsic instead of celebrating relationships and memories and experiences and getting out of her comfort zone and, you know, being part of a team and finding purpose in her, in her work. They're the intrinsic motivations that really drive Ash, more so than the extrinsic motivation. So extrinsic motivations aren't bad in and of themselves, but if they are to the detriment of your intrinsic motivations, because if you have to do something or achieve something in order to be happy, in order to you know uh, work out who you are, then you'll never be satisfied. You'll always be searching and looking and you'll never be at peace. So um, it's finding that balance between intrinsic and extrinsic and, and, and finding so the balance does, does between achievement mean, and fulfilment as well. Does that mean in Ash's case um, that the motivation um, is, is personal fulfilment to do well, to be a better person every day, to focus on what she can control and that's the goal rather than winning that big cup is the goal? She's still got goals to win. Um, you can have both. Yeah. And then in terms of you literally prioritise which are more important for you. So, you know, success for Ash isn't winning Wimbledon or winning the Australian Open as much as success for Ash is knowing that she's worthy of going after Wimbledon, yeah. that she's worthy of competing and she's finding that intrinsic motivation along the way. And it's really getting that balance right between the human being and the human doing or, you know, between the person and the persona. But she's also done a great job of separating her goals from expectations, which is why she can stay so calm and stoic in clutch moments when the rest of the country is so nervous and anxious. <laughs> because her goals are to win, but obviously there's no guarantees or promises or expectations. And she's been able to understand that distraction of expectation of outcome or of others and focus back on the things she can control. And the only expectation for Ash, of Ash, is to focus on the controllables, which obviously is her intent mm. you know, and the tactics and strategy that she works on with her brilliant coach, Craig Tyson, um, and her mindset, you know, the words and, and affirmations and mantras that reminds her of who she is at her best. Mm. And then she just stays there. It doesn't guarantee you'll win, mm. but it does guarantee you'll bring the best version of you to the dance floor, and that's the only expectation of that, or, or for the rest of us, really. Because, mm. sure, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I think sort of normal people... Um, five down in the second set, uh, as Ash was, Rafael Nadal down two sets. Normal people would say, look, it's 10 o'clock at night, it's hot. Um, I'll try again next year. And I, I just wonder whether or not there's a lot of rhetoric in politics. About, I'm going to dig deep, I'm going to do all these things that we don't really even understand what that means. No, I mean, I wish I had a mindset coach as well. Um, but really... Ash Barty is a phenomenon and like all professional athletes of, at her level, preternaturally talented. But I think what we're starting to finally recognise is the just 
insane amounts of mental, psychological toughness that, you know, can take someone from being preternaturally talented to dominating the world. But I think the flip side of that is we're also maybe starting to slowly have a conversation about just how difficult that psychological challenge of competing at that level can be. I mean, professional sport can be really alienating. It's a really weird environment which these people operate in. Um, you know, they're always in the spotlight. They're isolated from friends and family for large stretches of time. And a lot of athletes, that's really hurt them, particularly during the COVID pandemic. You know, it's been such a difficult time for them. And I think maybe we've got to balance our kind of deification of these athletes with sometimes a bit more generosity towards the difficulties mentally of what they have to do. So every time we see someone maybe not perform for the press conferences the way we'd like or, or go through a form slump or that kind of thing, I think it's worth reflecting on the kind of toughness and the challenges that they have to go through as well. Mm. Mm. It, it, it's interesting, as uh, Jane, the, the, the counterintuitive nature of it. You've got to say out loud... I'm worthy of winning Wimbledon. I'm worthy of winning the Australian Open. And if I, and if I fall short of that, um, that's not going to affect who I am. But I've got to dare and I've got to have courage and I've got to have trained my mind. Uh, how do you reflect on that? Well, I have no understanding what it is to be a sports star. I'm a bit of a sports-free zone to tell the truth. <laughs> I, um, I actually think that this idea of staying true to yourself and doing the best that you are capable of most of the time. I'm not a believer in you've always got to do your best or you've got to be a better person every single day. I think that's exhausting and unrealistic. I actually think that failure is incredibly important and it's the time you learn most. Mm. Um, so I think instead of hating ourselves for failing, in a way we need to get to a point where we recognise that to fail means we're trying to do something we don't already know how to do, which is the essence of growing. If you just do what you're already good at, already know how to do, you're not getting anywhere. You're just treading water. So my view is it's the fight. It's the, it's the determination. It's the trying that matters. The actual winning is nothing. The thing that pushes me on, particularly in the... Um, desperately dispiriting fight for public education in this country um, is what Joshua Wang said. He was one of the demonstrators in the Hong Kong, you know, marches back a few years ago um, and he went, was jailed, he came straight out of jail and he was interviewed by a reporter as he walked to the front line of the demonstration again and they said, why are you doing this? You can't possibly, as we now know, win. And he said, we fight on with no hope of winning. And I just love that. To me, that is what all human beings must do. Because in the end, life's not about winning. You know, the end of life is you die. It's not a winning game. <laughs> the point is to keep fighting for what you believe in, for who you are, for what you feel you can strive for, um, and do that even if you have no hope of winning. That's not the point. Yeah. The point is the doing of it, not the winning of it. But Ben, is that is that what you're advocating in a nutshell? Yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. everything Jane said. It's, it's uh, she's emulating purpose mindset. It's about what you do, but why you do it, and you know how you can be the best part of someone else's day. She spoke about celebrating your imperfections as as a human being, rather than berate ourselves, is to you know embrace your weird, and about owning your story. And Ash will say every press conference, she's just trying to be the best human being she could be, and wanting to grow every day that's success for her she can continue to grow and learn and be curious you know on the other side of adversity is possibility with her to continue those kind of principles and not be so caught up in achievement um and and fame to determine her um to determine her self-worth and, can, and can you said, see when she's yeah. getting that right on court can you see when she's by looking at her that she's doing what you've talked about that she's <clears> not distracted in the moment she's she's down like you know she's down uh, and and she's just focused and taking out what you call the the uncontrollables and focusing on the control. Can you see that from the box? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you can see it in body in body in body language. Sometimes you can see it in um, execution of skill. Um, and sometimes you can't. Obviously, you can't say you know exactly what's going through in people's minds. And that's why we have a you know two and three way conversation with Craig, yeah. Tyzer and Ash in a pre pre post match just to kind of discuss that uh, per se. But we all get distracted for very different reasons. For some, it might be ego. 
fear attaching your self-worth to the outcome, expectations of results, expectations of others. <laughs> so it's identifying a different flavor of distraction um, and then acknowledging it, accepting it, and then letting go. Um, if you don't accept the uncontrollables, that will more, more than likely become the distraction for you. Wow. Hey, would you do a little exercise with us? Um, I think you call it the game of three words, Craig. I'm ready to play. Tell me. Ben? Uh, the game of three words. Yes, yeah. I think there are three um, words you identify and then you attach it to three things in your life. Is that how it goes? Um, well, it depends which the exercise uh, you're talking about. If it's regarding performance mindset, the exercise is literally find a performance when you're at your best. Um, it could be a primary school playing sport or in a school musical or sitting an exam. And then find the words that best describes how you're feeling in that moment. Find three words that best describes how you're feeling. And then stay in that place um, for as long as you can, as much as you can. And that's, yeah, that's the performance mindset exercise. Um, your earliest happiest memory exercise is quite similar. It's just finding an early happy memory. And again, finding the words that best describes how that little boy or girl was feeling in that memory and yeah. show up from that place. And it's, you're focusing more on, you're creating a to-be list rather than a to-do list. Oh, that's interesting, Brian. Yeah. I mean, if I'm yes. thinking of my best moment in a performance setting, it would be flow, <laughs> when we're all talking to one another. Mm. It would be fear, because I don't... I'm not in control of the conversation. I'm just waiting on you guys and mm -hmm. letting it work. And it would be humility and accepting that I can look like a goose, which is pretty <laughs> much always course. happening. Yeah. What are your three? Um, I have three. One of the things I really like about that, um, the mindset uh, that, that we bring here to this is, this is what I want to have happen in schools. This is why I want young people back in schools, right? So you're in this situation where you're not talking about the negatives. You're going, what can you control? What yeah. can't you control? Yeah. And, and role modeling that. Um, and so I think the mindset here is so important. Um, for me, this year, looking forward in particular... Very briefly now. Be slow. Be, be kind, slow. Be slow. Just slow the whole thing down. Be kind. Be strong. Oh, I love it. <laughs>